So after working in global tax, I can confirm that an ISA is one of the best investment products available anywhere in the world to everyday investors like you and me. And since its creation, there's been over 4,000 millionaires created via Stocks and Shares ISA, showing you just how great this product can be in creating wealth. First of all, the obligatory warning, this video is not financial advice, it's just for educational purposes and everyone has their own tax and investing requirements. So make sure you do your own research and what's right for you rather than just copy what I talk about in this video. And of course, with all investing, your capital is at risk where investments can go up as well as down. So the main thing I want you to take away from this video is that an ISA or an individual savings account is a tax-free way to invest your money. Now, when you're looking to invest in stocks and shares, an ISA is not the only way to invest, but if you do decide to invest outside of an ISA, then you'll be subject to tax. So this could be capital gains tax, income tax, dividend tax, or savings income tax to name a few. But if you do the same investments inside of an ISA, whether you make 100 pounds or 1,000 pounds, it's all going to be tax-free and the UK government won't be able to tax you on any of your profits. And all you have to do to take advantage of this product is to be over the age of 18 and be a UK tax resident. Now, this all sounds too good to be true and there is one small limitation and it is a very small limitation. The maximum amount you can invest in an ISA, which is called the annual allowance, is currently set at £20,000 per tax year. Now, what can you actually buy in an ISA? Well, you can buy shares of individual companies such as Amazon, Google, Johnson & Johnson. You can also buy commodities such as gold and silver, but you can also buy index funds. And this is what I first started with when I got into investing. And if I have to describe an index fund in one sentence, it's where there's a collection of individual companies joined up together and the overall value of the index fund is the rough average of all of those companies put together. One of the most famous index funds is the S&P 500, which is the 500 largest US-based companies. But there's literally thousands of index funds out there, each offering something different. Now, the benefit of an index fund is your risk to any one company going bad is lessened as your investments are diversified across several companies. Now, because stocks and shares ISAs are all about investing, the value of your ISA can go up and down at any one given time. So let's say you decide to buy a Tesla stock in your ISA portfolio. Now, the Tesla stock price could go up and it could go down. However, with this being an investment, it's always best to not worry about the day-to-day -day or month-to-month -month swings in your portfolio. At the very minimum, whatever you decide to invest in your stocks and shares ISA, you should not be expecting to take it out for at least five years. Of course, nothing is guaranteed, but historically, when investing in the stock market, especially an index fund such as S&P 500, over the long run, so I'm talking 10 years plus, the average annual return ends up being around 7 to 9%, which is actually pretty impressive. And if we take this rough annual gain of around 7%, it's possible to see what your investment will be like in the future. So let's say you start your ISA with nothing and then invest £200 every month over a period of 15 years with a growth rate set at 7%. Whilst you'd only have contributed £36,000 during this time, the total return after 15 years will be almost £63,000, showing you the power of leaving your money in the stock market over time. And we can now start to see how people are using products such as ISAs to become rich. This next part is important to take note of as it can cause a bit of an issue if you don't understand it properly. You can have as many ISAs as you want and there are a few reasons why you might want to have more than one ISA, but you can only contribute into one stocks and shares ISA per tax year. If you already have an ISA and you decide next tax year that you wanna open a new one and you'd like to consolidate your existing ISA into the new one, then be careful. Don't sell what's in ISA one and then buy into ISA two as that'd eat into your tax years annual allowance. Instead, ask for your existing ISA to be transferred into your new ISA and that way your annual allowance won't be utilized. There are some costs associated with having an ISA and these are typically from the provider that's giving you this service. The charges generally range from 0 to 2% of your portfolio. I would say make sure you pay real good attention to this charge as once your returns start piling up, that small percentage really starts becoming a large number as a percentage of your returns. 
And lastly, there's loads of providers out there that are offering you the option of opening a stocks and shares ISA. And it really depends on what you're looking for. But a few of the areas you should definitely look at when contemplating which provider to choose from are the costs, how much are the management fees, the investment choice, do they actually offer the types of investments that you want to make, the level of involvement, is it a do-it-yourself portfolio or does it automatically create a ready-made portfolio for you, accessibility, how easy is it to view your portfolio, some ISAs provide apps whilst others don't, and lastly how good is their customer Customer support. Have you looked online at what people have to say about them? So that's the stocks and shares ISA ad. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it's one of the world's best investment products out there. And over the coming videos, I'll be sharing how my returns have been from over 10 years of investing. So if you want to see that, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next video.